When you open RapidCalc for the first time, the main screen looks like this. You can't start using RapidCalc until you've personalised it with your own targets, ratios and other settings. Obviously, we always advise that you work with your healthcare professional to set the right values for you. Our first job is to set your blood glucose units to match your blood glucose meter. This is only done the first time you use RapidCalc. Since this is a key setting used throughout the app, if you ever need to change it, you'll have to do a factory reset of RapidCalc. Now we can start the rest of the configuration. The settings are divided into a number of sections. This first section is where we enter our units and limits. Our blood glucose units are already set. The next choice is our carb units. RapidCalc lets you choose to measure directly in grams or in portion sizes. The carb ratio measure is also set by your choice of carb units. Because I'm working in 10 gram portions, my carb ratio measure has been set to units of insulin per portion. If I was working in grams, it will be set to the number of grams of carbohydrate covered by one unit of insulin. I can choose to have my HbA1c expressed as either a percentage or in millimoles per mole. Here, we set the smallest dose that you can inject with your pen or syringe so that RapidCalc can round its suggested dose to match. The last option is a safety feature, especially for children, to limit the maximum dose that RapidCalc will ever suggest. The next step is blood glucose thresholds. These set the green, red and amber colour bands. First, we'll set the lower and upper values for our ideal blood glucose range and this will be our green band. I'll set the lower limit to 5 millimoles per litre because I'm in the UK and that's the minimum requirement for driving. For my upper limit, I'll set 8 millimoles per litre because the normal range for a non-diabetic doesn't go above this value. I've deliberately made this range quite tight to give myself something to aim for. I'm setting the hypo and ketone warning levels which determine my red bands. The values between the ideal and the warning bands will be coloured amber. I now want to take you back to the main settings menu. Straight away I can see that I've completed the first two sections because they're ticked. The next section to be completed is the time bands. The three sections after that are greyed out because I can't set them until I've set my time periods. Before RapidCalc can be used, all sections must be completed and ticked. To save time, I filled in the remaining values and will now take you through them. Let's continue to time periods. RapidCalc divides the day into six time periods so that you can have different targets and ratios for different parts of the day. You can customise these time periods by setting the start time for each. Together, they cover a complete day or 24 hour period. For example, sometime between 12.30 and 2pm is when I have my lunch. The next section is target blood glucose levels. This is where I set targets for each of the time periods we've just defined. A good starting point, if you're new to RapidCalc, will be to set all of these to the middle of your ideal range and refine them as you go. In my example, this will be 6.5 millimoles per litre. For me though, my lunch target is 5.5 millimoles per litre, which means that during the lunch period, RapidCalc will calculate the dose needed to get me to this target, based on my current blood glucose reading and my planned carb intake. Now we'll move on to correction factors. This is the amount by which one unit of insulin will lower your blood glucose. Or to put it another way, it reflects how sensitive you are to insulin. It is quite common for your body to respond differently to insulin at different times of the day. 
In my case, as you can see, they all happen to be the same. The carbohydrate ratios determine how much insulin you need to cover a given amount of carbohydrate. In my case, I'm using 10 gram portions and my ratio is two units of insulin for each 10 gram portion. We'll now move away from the time band related settings. The insulin usage profile is used by RapidCalc to work out how much insulin is still active in your system at any given point in time, commonly referred to as insulin on board. These six hours represent the six hours following a dose. For each hour, we specify how much of the original insulin dose was used. How quickly the insulin is used over these six hours will depend on the type of insulin and your metabolism. The total of the percentages must add up to 100% over the six hours. Any form of physical activity will reduce your blood glucose level at a rate depending on the duration of the activity and how strenuous it is. This requires a reduction in your insulin dose to compensate. On this page, you tell RapidCalc how much you want to reduce the dose by for different combinations of intensity and the duration of the exercise. We'll now move on to the basal dosing. I can set up three basal doses per day. I can set the time and the amount for each. If I open RapidCalc when a dose is due, I'll be taken straight to the basal dose screen with the scheduled dose preset. All I have to do is dose and save the record. Here we have the reminder options. For basal doses, I'll hear an audible alert and see an app badge when a dose is due. The second reminder prompts me to check my blood glucose level sometime after I've dosed for a meal. By default, the delay is two hours, but you can change this. Our final section contains your personal details. This information is used when you back up or export your data. The copy email address is useful if you want to share a copy of your data with your healthcare professional. Obviously, it's up to you who you share your information with. None of your data is sent or used for any other purpose. All of our settings are now ticked. And RapidCalc is ready to use. If I want to edit a setting, I can tap the appropriate section to go to it directly. If I need to clear my data or factory reset RapidCalc, I can do that here. Of course, all sections have context sensitive help. From now on, RapidCalc will remember all of this for you, so that you don't have to.